everyone, it's almost a weekend and there's no better way to look back at the week that was than with a rundown of the good things that have happened because here at the Manila Bulletin, there is good news. So welcome to the MB Rundown. There couldn't be anything more uplifting than the results of a survey conducted by the Social Weather Station which said that 43% of Filipinos expect their quality of life to improve in the next 12 months. This was the result of an SWS survey conducted among 1,200 correspondents last March 25 to 28. And the survey agency said this was considered very high. Only 6% said that their lives will get worse. In the same light, 47% of Filipinos expressed optimism that the Philippine economy will improve within the next 12 months, with only 9% saying that it will deteriorate. From the economy to social health care, thanks to the initial release of the Department of Health's allocation of sin taxes, or the taxes collected from the sale of cigarettes and alcohol, the government will soon be able to provide free medicine for those who are sick with cervical cancer. According to Dr. Clarito Kai, National Program Manager of the Department of Health, Cancer Prevention and Control Programs, cervical cancer may be added to the list of cancer diseases that the government will be able to subsidize. And this could happen as early as 2018. As it is, the government is already providing free chemotherapy drugs to patients who are battling cancer of the breast, colon, and rectum. And the good news doesn't stop there because the Senate has already approved a bill that will extend the validity of Philippine passports sports from 5 to 10 years. Passed on the third and final reading was the new Philippine Passport Act, which would mean less hassle for passport holders who no longer have to renew their passports every five years. That could also mean less congestion at the Department of Foreign Affairs passport issuing offices. Let's now go to developments that happened this week, which will surely affect our motorists. Last Thursday, the Anti-Distracted Driving Act took effect. It's a road safety law that may have been long in coming as there are thousands of vehicular accidents that have already been attributed to drivers having their hands full with texting or calling on their cell phones while driving. Under the new law or Republic Act 10913, drivers are prohibited to use communication devices and other electronic gadgets while driving or even while the vehicle is at the stop on the road at, say, a red light. Fines are hefty for violators of this new law. 5,000 pesos for the first offense, 10,000 pesos for the second offense, 15,000 pesos on the third offense, plus a three-month suspension of the offending driver's license, and 20,000 pesos for the fourth infraction and thereafter, plus revocation of the driver's license. Drivers will still be allowed to take calls while driving provided they use hands-free devices like speakerphones or earphones. By the way, the general rule here is that no electronic or communication device should obstruct the view of the driver with regard to the windshield. Thus, it is a no-no for drivers to put their gadgets on the windshield or the dashboard while using navigational apps like Waze and Google Maps. And since the law is silent on the presence of adornments on the dashboard like your favorite stuffed toy or bottle of car freshener, these will not be considered violations of the law. For those with dash cams, these will be allowed as long as they're placed behind the rearview mirror so as not to obstruct the driver's complete vision of the road. The only exemptions will be the use of mobile phones in cases of emergency like when reporting a crime or accident or in times of calamity. Another landmark road law also takes effect starting today, May 19. The Children's Safety on Motorcycles Act will now be strictly enforced. Children and minors below 18 years old will no longer be allowed to board motorcycles if they are too short to reach the motorcycle's foot peg and too small to reach around the waist of the driver. And should these kids be tall and large enough to comply with these requirements, they should of course be wearing helmets and other standard protective gear before any motorcycle driver decides to take them on a ride. Violators will be fined 3,000 pesos on the first offense, 5,000 pesos for the second infraction, and 10,000 pesos plus a one-month suspension of the driver's license for the third offense. The Senate has approved Senate 
Bill 1363 or an act institutionalizing telecommuting in the workplace and for other purposes. A study made by the Japan International Coordination Agency or JICA says that the Philippines lost 2.4 billion pesos per day in 2015 and could lose up to 6 billion pesos a day by the year 2030 because of traffic. Therefore, the bill aims to promote work-life balance because employees will be able to spend more time with their families than stuck in traffic. With telecommuting, a flexible work arrangement will be possible if it is agreed upon by the employer and the employee. Smoking will no longer be allowed in public spaces after President Duterte finally signed Executive Order No. 26 or the nationwide smoking ban, just in time for World No Tobacco Day on May 31. In the Executive Order, the strict standards of designated areas for smoking were also specified. Now for good news from the other parts of the world, Canada may soon ban the practice of bumping off passengers from commercial flights in the wake of the horrific experience of an American airline passenger who was physically dragged off from his seat and offloaded from a flight. Canadian Transportation Minister Mark Garneau said that such an incident will not be tolerated in Canada. The new law provides that a passenger may only be offloaded or bumped off if he or she voluntarily agrees and that he or she will be entitled to minimum compensation. And to further protect the rights of airline passengers, the law will also obligate the airlines to pay for long delays on tarmacs, see children near a parent at no extra charge, and develop new standards for transporting musical instruments after traveling musicians posted their complaints on social media about their instruments being broken during flight. Should the Canadian Parliament pass this law, it will be implemented on 2018. And for our last bit of news in our weekly roundup, U.S. President Donald Trump will be addressing the religious divide when he embarks on a tour on Saudi Arabia, the Vatican, and Jerusalem for his first foreign trip since getting elected. In the past, U.S. leaders generally chose U.S. neighbors like Canada or Mexico for their first trip abroad, but Trump will be making a bold move by diving right into a mission to tackle the world's most difficult spiritual and political conflicts. In Saudi Arabia, Trump will meet with King Salman and his crown prince, as well as attend the gathering of dozens of Muslim leaders. In Jerusalem, he will be meeting Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and will be visiting the Bad Yashe Memorial to the Holocaust victims. He will also offer prayers at the Western Wall, which is one of Judaism's holiest sites. Trump's third stop will be the Vatican for an audience with Pope Francis, and he will also tour St. Peter's Basilica and discuss diplomatic issues with the pontiff. And that's a rundown of the good news that happened this week. But we would like to hear what you have to say, so make sure you use the hashtag MBRundown in all your comments, status, and tweets. I'll see you again next week.